morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us, let us, let us rejoice, rejoice, amen, and be glad in it. God has spared our lives to be in the sanctuary one more time. And if nobody else is excited, the saints of God ought to be excited, amen, to be in the house of the Lord one more time. We're glad to see all of you that have come in on this yet another Lord's Day. We are thankful unto God for any visitors who may be visiting with us. We're thankful unto God for those who are viewing us online, amen, by YouTube or Facebook. We also invite you to come and be a part with us here in the sanctuary. Amen. We're just looking forward to a hallelujah time in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And any visitor that is visiting with us, we will have even more of a formal welcome near the end of our worship experience. Amen. Amen. We're not going to hold you long. We're going to get right into the worship experience. Amen. We're going to reach back, grab one of these old time hip hip slappers, leg slappers, toe tappers. Amen. And we ask that y'all would just come on in and worship with us this morning. For this is a, a day where the Lord has, re, has made and we ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Anybody come to worship today? Amen. Yeah.
but I got joy. Trouble on my mind, but I got joy. Tell me not doing right, but I still got joy. I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it Early in the morning I got joy Joy, unspeakable joy Unspeakable, unspeakable, unspeakable joy Joy, 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 joy I still got joy it won't let me hold my peace. It won't, it won't let me hold my peace. Anybody know about this joy I'm talking about? Late in the midnight hour. I, 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 I still got joy. He walks with me. In the midst of my trials, I got joy. In the midst of my storm, I got joy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I got joy. Joy, 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 joy. Joy, 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 joy. Let's go. I still got joy. Still got joy through the storm and the rain through all my stress and pain. Thank God I still, I still, I still, I still, I still, I still, I can. I got joy, I got joy, oh joy, a joy the world can't give you, a joy that the world can't take away, I, 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 I got joy, I got joy, I got joy, anybody, anybody know this joy? The world can't give it, and the world can't take it away. Joy! Yeah, it won't let me. Oh, oh, it won't let me. It won't let me hold, hold my peace. Jesus, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. See, when you got joy, you can be down to your last dime, and you can still make your way to the house of the Lord and give God a hallelujah praise. When you got joy, the doctor might come out with a bad prognosis. But as long as I got King Jesus, as long as I got him, I got joy. The doctor can't give it. The doctor can't take it away. The world can't give it. Oh, I still got joy. 
All right, now, excuse me. Excuse me for the dignified folk in here. Every now and then, even with my little educated self, I lay my education down when I think of the goodness of God and all that he's done for me, how he brought me, how he taught me, how he saved me, how he raised me, and how he gives me joy, 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 joy. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Thank God I still, I still, I still, I still, I still, I got my joy. Parents, if you want to take your children to the children's church, we uh, they are right back in the nursery. We're trying to get children's church started again. So if the kids want to go back, amen, then you're more than welcome. Parents, bring your young people, amen, back to church, amen. We got to train them up in the way they should go. When they're older, they will not depart. Amen, amen. Thank you. While you are turning to with me to the book of Acts, chapter 14. Amen. We got some people coming in, so I'll go ahead and read the scripture first, and then I'll do a prayer, and then we'll, amen, continue with our, our message. Thank God that we got a little air going back again. But if we didn't have that air, as long as I got air in my mouth, breath in my body, I'm still going to give him, amen, a hallelujah praise, amen. When you found it, if you would please be so kind to stand with us as we prepare to read Acts chapter 14. I I'm only really want to look at two verses in your hearing on today scroll down if you will I may try to go a little further but I, I only think I'm gonna get past to get two verses and that's 21 and 22 amen 21 and 22 you'll find these well let's back up to 19 cause uh, 21 starts with the conjunction and so just to get a running start at it back up to some uh, to 19 even though uh, 19 starts with another conjunction but but if you will just let me start there but some of the Jews came from Antioch and Iconium and won over the crowd by persuasion they stoned Paul and dragged him out of town thinking he was dead. But the disciples formed a circle around him and, got, and he got up and went back to town. The next day, he left on his own accord. I just thought I'd throw that in there. <laughs> he went out, <laughs> went on with Barnabas to Derby. Here's our, our focus scripture today. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned again, again to Lystra, to Iconian, and Antioch confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to keep in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. You may be seated. 
Will you pray with me for just a moment? Father, again, we thank you, Lord, for your love. We thank you, Father, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your grace, as well as the privilege to be able to call on such a wonderful, righteous, majestic God. Words cannot express just how grateful and humbled I am to be in your service because I am a sinner and all of my sins are ever before thee. But I thank you, Lord, that you promised in your word that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, Lord, by the blood of the Lamb, by the blood of the one who sitteth at the right hand of you, with nail-scarred hands and nail-scarred feet, a hole in his side, a crown imprintment, an imprintment upon his head, and the blood at the foot of your throne that was shed at Calvary's cross. I now petition your throne of grace and mercy on behalf of myself as well as the, the entire church and those who may hear this word in the future to, to endow me with power from on high, clear out my mind from anything that's unlike you and restore unto me a fresh anointing of your Holy Ghost power that I may preach and teach like I've never done before, preach and teach like I'll never get another chance to do it again, and then open up the ears of all of your people. Help us all to hear a word. For anyone who does not know you, I pray that something would be said that they too may want to get to know you. For those of us who are already saved, I pray that this message would be as what you would have it intended to be that it would bring encouragement, enlightenment, and uplifting to one another, that we might move forward in this walk, amen, called life. Until you see fit to call us home, Lord, help us to be your instruments. In your son Jesus' name, we do pray. Let every heart say amen, amen, and amen, amen. Thank you for the music ministry, amen, uh, here today. Amen. We uh, asked your prayers for our, uh, our youngest son. He, he, amen, took a vacation on himself. Amen. By himself. So, hey, yeah. Yeah. Look here. I looking, I'm looking forward. <laughs> He, he always tell me, Daddy, don't be rushing me. <laughs> Amen. I look forward to all of our kids. Amen. Doing well. Amen. And taking care of themselves and my wife as well. Amen. We, we celebrate those things and we celebrate it. It is tough to see them, but it is also things that we celebrate. Amen. And you ought not be afraid to flap your wings. Amen. Use your wings that God has given you. Amen. So that, amen, you find out through faith they will work. As long as you got faith in God, they will work. So we are thankful unto God. Amen. Keep, keep us in prayer, all the pastoral family in prayer. But we are thankful for the music team that's already here in place. Amen. Things are moving right along. Amen. Brother Josh, amen. Brother Josiah, and, and of course, Brother Lawrence, amen. Been like a pillar around here. He's been here a long time, amen. So we're thankful for him. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get right on into the message here. Uh, pray for us and pray with us. I want to continue this series, if you will, uh, about knocked down but not knocked out a part four but as a subtopic I want to talk about my scars my scars my scars are a testimony of encouragement my scars amen once you've been injured amen cut it leaves a scar and my scars are a testimony of encouragement hear me this week as I was listening to a, 
program on Christian radio, I overheard a story, amen, overheard a story about a man who was working on what I believed uh, was a radio tower. At first, I wasn't really listening to the broadcast, but over time, I began uh, tuning in to what the man was saying after I came to the realization that he was giving a testimony, giving his testimony. The man and his son were working on a high-powered radio tower. And they were communicating uh, by walkie-talkie. The, the father was at the tower. And the son was in the studio booth. As the dad was working on the radio tower, amen, outside, away from the studio booth, he keyed up his walkie-talkie and said to his son back at the, ra at the studio, at the radio studio station, he said, don't turn it on. But because of radio interference and because of the way the microphone had keyed up one way or another, all that the son heard was, somebody, somebody already know where I'm going, turn it on. And as the son uh, mistakenly, amen, turned on the power, uh, the electrical current ripped through this man, first ripping through his hand, causing his hand to catch on fire, then burning and blowing out his wrist and forearm portions of his forearm. The current continued to travel through his body, amen, and as it continued to travel through his body, it blew out his thigh and had a large gaping hole in his thigh. When the doctor saw the severity of uh, this man's injury, he was sure that number one, this man will need surgery in the morning and have to have his leg amputated and two even if he did not have surgery he was sure that this man would never be able to walk again but unto his belief when the doctor came in the next morning after examining the man's hand and after examining the man's leg, he saw the progression of his hand and he saw the progression of his leg. Amen. He came to a different prognosis and the doctor immediately replied to the man after examining his hand and after looking at his blown out leg, he said, nobody but God. And now this man who was electrocuted is using the scars of his hand and the scars of his leg as a testimony to bring a word of enlightenment and encouragement about God to anyone who is willing to listen to his testimony. Another way of saying it is that this man who was electrocuted 
uh, is using the scars of God's miracle working power to bring a word of encouragement to just anybody who is willing to listen to his testimony. Well, perhaps as I survey the room this morning, perhaps there's a number of people in this room whose lives have been scarred in such a way, amen, one way or another that your life, amen, could serve as a testimony. The scars of your life. Some in here may have been scarred financially. Some may have been scarred, amen, by sickness or health challenges. Others may have been scarred by some type of abuse, whether it's family, sexual, marital, or otherwise. Some may be scarred by their skin tone. Just the color of their skin may have brought scars in your life. Some may even been scarred, amen, through family lineage or through hereditary stuff that has been passed down from one generation to another. Some folk who may hear this online, amen, and not in the sanctuary, may have been scarred by some fake phony church members. Help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, Your scars could be, amen, that someone whom you trusted lied to you and hurt your heart. Another person's scar could be the death of a loved one. Some mother, some father could be experienced living with the scars of burying their only child. Other mothers or fathers may be living with the scars, amen, of not just burying one child, but burying more. Have I got a witness of their children? And now because of God in your life, you can say, I've been knocked down but not knocked out. Somebody this morning, amen, may have never smoked a cigarette and now living with the scars of some type of lung cancer or COPD. I don't know what's in the room. But I stopped by this morning, amen, to bring to you from this lesson, amen, that that Paul, amen, is trying to teach us how to live with and how to use our scars as a testimony for somebody, amen, somebody else and use our scars as a word of encouragement for others as to just how good and powerful God is. Have I got a witness? At the background of this lesson, amen, you'll find that Paul is on what Christians and uh, what most Christians and Bible scholars calls uh, his first missionary journey. Traveling along with him, is another disciple by the name of Barnabas. They're traveling through an area that was recognized in biblical time as Asia Minor, but in today it is known as the country of Turkey. Paul and Barnabas have, after after being driven out of Antioch, Pisidia for preaching the gospel, after almost being stoned in a place called Iconian for preaching the gospel, 
And then after Paul was stoned and left for dead in a place called Lystra for preaching the gospel, we now see Barnabas and Paul, or Paul and Barnabas, more specifically, amen, both of them, in their scarred, ridden bodies, returning to areas where they had been knocked down, but not knocked out. And as they are returning to these places where they uh, have received their scars, they are returning, amen, to, re to bring encouragement to themselves as well as to others. Walk with me, walk with me here, walk with me. Listen to what I'm trying to say. See, they are bringing encouragement to themselves because they are returning to the scene of the crime. Y'all ain't gonna help me. All right, let me give you a little, little childlike illustration. Everybody in here, amen, that can ride a bicycle, let me see your hand, let me see your hand. Yeah, or used to, anyhow. <laughs> When you started riding your bicycle, did you ever fall down? Goes without saying. But the person who taught me how to ride the bicycle taught me, amen, that once you fell, you had to get back. Because if you didn't get back on the bicycle, you would have been terrified, amen. And there are some people who don't know how to ride today because they fell down and they never got back on the bike again. But in order, amen, to bring encouragement to your own self, you had to get back on the bicycle and before long, amen, when you got back the second time, you noticed that you went further the second time. Somebody gonna help me than you did the first time. Well, Paul and Barnabas, amen, are getting back on the bicycle you might say, because they are going back to the scene of the crimes. It would have been detrimental to them had they not returned to the place or the places where they had once been scarred. So that was bringing encouragement to themselves. Oh, oh, think, think now. You, maybe, maybe, you, maybe you didn't understand what I'm trying to say here. Have you ever thought about the text when it said they stoned Paul, stoned him, meaning throwing bricks, stones, not, not of these little pebbles. When they would stone somebody, they would throw big rocks and throw them at them to kill them with stones. And the stones would have left scars, bruises, would have torn the flesh, would have burst his lips, would have swollen his eyes, would have swollen his, his, party, his, his parts of his body, perhaps break, breaking some of his ribs. They stoned him so bad until they thought because he was laying there lifeless, that they thought he was dead. In fact, that was their intention. Their intention was to stone him so bad until he was dead. In other words, they didn't stop stoning him until they thought he was dead. If he moved, if he squirmed, they threw another stone. And when he stopped moving, then they took off and left him as if he was. 
So now here he is with his scar ridden body going back to the very scene, to the very cities that had stoned him and left him for dead. Imagine the scars that he had upon his face, the disfigurement of his face when he returned to the cities where they stoned him. Okay, let me go one step further here. Walk with me, if you will. Not only do we have physical scars in the text, but we also have emotional scars in the text because not only does Paul have emotional scars from, amen, the trauma that he experienced in his life, amen, but can you imagine the trauma that his friend must have experienced to watch his best friend, his road dog, be stoned to death and he not be able to go in and rescue him? Not only does Paul have physical, but Barnabas has emotional. Y'all listening to me? emotional scars that he's living with and both of them now are traveling back to the cities where a man they have been scarred all to bring encouragement to first perhaps themselves as well as to the folk whom they had just witnessed to. Okay, I feel the Holy Ghost saying extra, extra here already because a lot of times we look at evangelism is just a way of you go out, you witness to somebody, you teach them about Jesus, you, they believe that he lived, died, and rose again. Good job, I've done a good job, good riddance. But evangelism is more than just witnessing. We need to encourage, come on now, talk to me if you will, one another. The purpose of our scars, our scars are, amen, to, as the text says, strengthening the disciples. If you look at verse 14 and 22, amen, uh, they've gone back to, amen, the cities to strengthen the disciples. The word strengthen means to place firmly upon or so to make firm, to prop up, to support, to uphold. You ever thought about why we need to encourage one another? Because the Bible says in 1 Peter 5 and 8 that we have an adversary. Can I teach for a moment? We don't have, we got enough going on with the devil that we ought not be go, have it going on with one another in the church. We, listen. When folk come to church, church folks ought not have a, a bad thing to say about folk who come to church, even though their lives might be all jacked up, even though they may not say good morning, even though they may not say a uh, salutation of the day. We got enough hell going on in the world that we ought to be say we glad to have you here. I wish I had some help here. Anytime anybody comes to church, amen, no matter what their situation, no matter what their condition is in their life, we ought to be trying to encourage them, keep coming. It gets better if you keep coming. Keep, keep, keep walking because the very next verse talks about a portion of this verse, talking about continue in the faith. We don't have, we don't have, we got enough stuff going on with the devil that we don't have. Amen, amen. Or let me put it this way. 
Most of us got enough discouragement in our own lives that we don't need it from the church. We get enough discouragement on our job. We get enough discouragement in our neighborhood. You walk out sometimes your front door and you see a discouragement. You don't even have to leave your house. Just turn on the TV and we get enough discouragement. Amen. When we turn on the TV. Therefore, whenever we come to the house of the Lord, and if somebody makes their way into the house of the Lord, we ought to do everything in our power to bring a word of encouragement to, come on now, one another. One another. I'm scarred. I got my own scars. But I come every week trying to bring a word of encouragement. Amen. I understand why the old folks used to say, the old mothers and old deacons used to always say, you pray for me. And I'll pray for you. Because all of us have been scarred. Not a person in this room that is not, that is living, that don't have some type of scar. And here, here we come with our scar ridden self and then somebody going to say something foolish in the church. I ain't talking about liberty. Maybe I am, I don't know. Depends on if it's you or not. <laughs> Ah, we got to get better. Have I got a witness? The text says they strengthened one another. They propped up. They supported. They uphold. Do you know, do you know, do you know, do you know, do you know that the way we get strength, the Bible said faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You got to let people come and hear the word so they can get stronger every day. And if you are a person who is living a scarred, rid life and you're not coming to hear the word, the, the very main reason why your life seems to be out of control is because it, not the absence of the word, amen, in our lives. The more I read it, the better I feel. Well, let me, let, me, let me rephrase that. The more I read it, I still have joy. Because you can be down and still have joy. Because joy is something the world don't give you. you. Your body can be aching and still have I got to get moving. I got to get moving. I've been here too long. But let me throw this in here as I make my way home. You ever been to the hospital and visit somebody who was sick? And you come away encouraged? That's because they got joy. In other words, their body, they body might be racked with pain, but, amen, the pain of the body doesn't take the joy of the Lord out of their hearts. Hmm, watch this, watch this. I'm, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Think, think for a moment. Let's, let, let's think for a moment. It says, encouraging them to continue in the faith. We must endure tribulations. Think about this. In order to get in the kingdom of God. The Bible says in, uh, in 2 Timothy 3 and 12, all who will live godly shall suffer persecution. You know, if you go, if you trying to do it, what is right, you'll go through something every now and then. But if you listen to what Paul said, Paul says, amen, uh, in uh, Romans th uh, 5, chapter, uh, verse number 3, he said, but we glory in tribulation because tribulation is working. In other words, my scars have meaning. My scars 
if I come to the house of the Lord. Now, if you stay at home and you don't bring your scars to the Lord, amen. See, the scars are supposed to drive us to God. Some of us let it drive us to bitterness instead of betterness. Help me, Holy Ghost. And then, then you don't have nobody around you, amen, because don't nobody want to be around no bitter, angry person. Why don't nobody love me? I'm, I'm just throwing this out here. I ain't <laughs> throwing it out here. <sighs> Let's go, Ty. As they're looking at this text, amen, and it says, uh, f- first Romans 5, 3, it says, tribulation worketh patience. Patience then is working in your life. Patience worketh experience and then experience brings about hope so all that we go through when we bring it to God it brings about hope knowing watch this that if he brought me through he can bring me through if he brought me through that he can bring me through this if he brought me through that he can bring me through have I got a witness in this place I've been here long enough now let me let me see if I can make an exit strategy here well Paul and Barnabas went on back to Lystra Iconian and Antioch confirming in other words strengthening the disciples. The Bible said he was exhorting them to stay, as I like to put it, with the Lord. Because if God be for you, and it ain't if God, it's since God, have I got a witness, is for you. Who can be, have I got a witness, against you? I thank God that uh, the Bible teaches us, amen, that we ought to encourage one another. Have I got a witness? The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 11, We ought to encourage one another and build up one another just as you are going. Well, can I use here one more illustration as I make my way home? Whenever we were in the military, when I was in the military and we were on a road march, one uh, one of the, the, the things that we were supposed to do uh, if a person was in your squad um, was to leave uh, nobody behind. Have I got a witness? In other words, uh, every now and then we would grab them by the arm and pull them along with us. First, we would start chanting and say, come on, you can do it. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Keep, keep on marching. And when, when they could not march any further, then we would grab them by the arm and by the shoulders and walk with them and tell them you can do it. Keep on keeping on. Why? Because we were all in the army together. I might need him someday. 
thing to save my life. He might need me someday to save his life. And so therefore, we committed to becoming comrades and encouraging one another. And when the load began to be so heavy on our soldiers, every now and then we would take uh, the rucksack off of them uh, and we would pass it around. I would carry the load um, for a little while and I'd pass it on to somebody else uh, all because uh, we were trying to stay. Have I got a witness together? Well, as I make my way home, can I tell you that there's somebody who carried our load for us on a hill called Calvary. I wasn't fit to live, but I wasn't ready to die. Have I got a witness? And God, on one Christmas morning, sin sent an advocate on my behalf and your behalf and he walked this earth for 33 years and he did not commit any sin he was perfect in his own way and I heard I heard the Bible saying that he did not commit a sin but on Calvary cross have I got a witness he took the sin of the world and put it on his back oh shucks now is there anybody here that want to help me thank God because he took our load you and me we have committed sin you and I we have fallen short you and I is there anybody in here that can be honest with God and to say Father I've sinned and come short of your word and I just want to take a little time to just say thank you Jesus cause you died in my place I just want to take a little time to say thank you Jesus because you bore my sin at Calvary's cross I just want to take a little time is there anybody here that know that he died on Calvary's cross they nailed his right hand to the cross didn't he do it they nailed his left hand to the cross didn't they do it they nailed his feet to the cross didn't they do it and I heard the Bible say that Jesus Mary's baby he could have called 10,000 angels to come and be by his side but if he had a came down off the cross I wouldn't be here nor would you be here so he stayed oh shucks now is there anybody here that want to celebrate with me that he bore he bore our sins he bore he bore our Seems. What do you mean, brother Pastor? I like what the old psalmist said. The old songwriter said, What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. 
Jesus. Anybody glad that on Calvary's cross he died? Didn't he do it on Calvary? On Calvary, Calvary falls. Is there anybody here that want to help me? Thank God that he died for your sin and mine. Oh, shucks now. I'm talking about scars. Anybody know that scars? You thinking about your scar? I'm thinking about my scar. But there's some scars at Calvary that is able to save, save the whole world. I thank God. I thank God for the nail scar in his hand, the nail scar in his feet, the the spear scar in his side, the crown imprinting on his head. Why, 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 why did he do it? Because he loved you. Why did he do it? Because he loved me. Why did he do it? Because he loved anybody here. Want to help me? Praise God. I got to go now. But the Bible said he died. Didn't he do it? The Bible said he gave up. They didn't take his life, but he gave it up because he loved you. He gave it up because he loved me. I thank God he was down, but he wouldn't stay down. He was down, but he wouldn't stay down because early Sunday morning he got He got up, 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 and because he got up, it's encouragement. It's encouragement for you and I, cause he got up. It's encouragement for the whole world. You can be down, but God can lift you up. You can be sad, but God can bring you out. You can be homeless, God can make a way. He got up, he got up, yeah. Is he all right? 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 Do you love him? Shout yeah! Ah, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. Let's go. Is he all right? Is he all right? Do you know him? Have you tried him? Won't he make a way? Won't he open doors? Won't he feed you when you're hungry? Won't he pick you up when you're down? Won't he give you joy? Won't he help you to get up? Won't he help you to run on? Anybody tried him? Anybody know him? Do you know the Lord? Do you know the Lord? Won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he do it? Won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he do it? Let's stay. Let's stay. Let's stay in all of the good. Listen. Listen. Our scars don't compare to the scars of Jesus. Doesn't mean that your scars are not real. He knows. But the scars that we go through, 
They are testimony. What you mean, brother pastor? You got up this morning, didn't you? Until the Lord called us home, whatever scar we're living with, it's a testimony for somebody else and an encouragement for ourselves. That if God can bring me through that, he can bring me through this. Paul and Barnabas, they went back to this, these new church areas. Yeah, Paul's like, I've been stoned, left for dead. Huh. But God, you missed it. You missed it. You missed it. You missed your shout cue. But God. They, they, they tried to take your job. But God. The doctor, the devil tried to give you a bad prognosis. But God, look at you. You still here, ain't you? And every day you get up, you ought to get up with a but God praise in your mouth. My finances ain't where they ought to be. But God, I'm still here. He still left me here. I don't know why. But God, the devil tried to make me lose my mind. But God, maybe, 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 maybe ain't nobody been where I've been. Maybe you ain't felt like I felt. I felt like throwing, just throwing in the towel. I felt like giving up. I felt like quitting. I felt like surrendering. But God, in spite of my fault, but God, in spite of my failures, but God gave me another, another, another another chance sometimes it came from another person sometimes the word of encouragement came from somebody else sometimes the word of encouragement came from his word but there's been a time in my life when I didn't want to talk to nobody I couldn't read his word and I laid and cried all night long but God, he never leaves you. Talk to me now, nor will he forsake you. Whosoever will, let him and her come. My scars, they are testimony. God provides, so why do I worry about my when you come to my rescue a thousand times every other voice is a lie it's a lie god provides god provides in ways i can't explain or can't deny He'll come through. When the rains of cloud rain down on you. When it's cloudy outside. And test everything you thought you knew. Now you finally see what God can do for you. So tonight. No more need to fight. 
Watch what? Watch God provide. God provide. He'll come through. He'll come through. It's hard to say when there's no food to eat. Sing this. I got joy. See, God, I only want what you believe. For me. For me. So tonight, close your eyes. There's no more need to fight. Watch God provide. Watch God provide. Come, come, just as you are. Just as you are. Close your eyes, there's no more need to fight. Oh, yeah. Watch God provide. Amen. You may be seated. God. Watch God provide. Stay right there, sis. Watch God provide. Watch God provide. Whatever you need, watch God provide. Watch God provide. Watch God provide. Yeah, whatever you need. No more need to fight. No more need to fight. Close your eyes. There's no more need to fight. So close your eyes. No more need, need to fight. One more time. Close your eyes, no more need to fight. <laughs> ah, thank you, Jesus. <laughs>